Alright, welcome back. I hope everyone's doing well today. So I just finished making all of my decisions for the capstone courier and in the simulation. And I'm going to go ahead and move forward. So let's file, update official decisions, save, and we are going to exit. And then since this is a practice round, we move or advance around ourselves. So let's go ahead and hit next round. Let's advance the game to the next round. Continue. Are you sure? Yes. All right, so now let's look at our current statistics. In this video, um, we're going to look at some key indicators and some key financial metrics that will tell if you're doing a good job or not. So we see our sales increased. We had a negative profit, which is OK. Um, our stock price decreased. And this is just a brief overview of your financial situation. So after you complete any round, um, go ahead and go back to the dashboard and let's hit reports. Let's go to industry reports and let's open up the capstone courier. So let's open this up for the round one that we just finished. So that downloaded and let's go ahead and uh, flip through the capstone courier and I'll point out a couple things that um, are going to be particularly helpful. So Brandon Griffin, there I am. Um, so right here it gives a brief snapshot of how he did against the market. And the things you want to look for are emergency loan. Did anyone get an emergency loan? No, which is very good. We didn't. Team Andrews. Our sales increased, which is very good. We actually have the highest amount of sales. And personally, I think you need to uh, pay a lot of attention to your contribution margin percentage. The magic number is about 30%. So we are at 31.6%, and that is very good. Um, right now, we are spending money. We are trying to grow our business, so our profits are negative, which is okay. The first half of the game, you're spending money, you're taking out loans, and the second half of the money, you should be gaining a lot of money that you can pay it all back. Just do everything in moderation and don't go too crazy. Looking down here, we look at our market share. Everyone started out at about 16%. So now that we're at 18%, and that's awesome. We are actually the leader. Look at the stock and bond market. Our stock price decreased because um, we had a negative earnings per share. Um, and that's okay. Don't be too worried if your stock goes down. If you were to hit zero and just keep riding zero the whole time, then you'd be worried. But during these first couple rounds, it's okay if you go sideways or even down a little bit like I did. So financial summary, if you want to dig into the finances, you can a little bit more. But on this page, the main thing I like to, I like to look for and the main reason why people get emergency loans is because of this inventory level right here. So I had an inventory level of 1,820. That is awesome. And it's probably one of the best I've ever done. A uh, more typical round is going to be somewhere in the 6,000, 9,000 range. If you were to get above 15 and, and you're in the 20, 30 millions or thousands, that's when I'd be really worried and that's when I guess you'd have some sort of an emergency loan. So our inventory, our inventory levels look pretty good and our net profit is negative. But like I said, that's okay during these first couple rounds. <clears throat> so looking here, you can see um, we actually sold out in one, two, three uh, segments. You can see our new, our two new products that we're creating, and we can see if anyone else is creating new products. Not yet. So on this page, you want to look at your unit sold, the leftover unit inventory. Um, you can see what your competitors did as far as MTBF and price, um, contribution margin. We see Acre. We used overtime, which is good. We're going to start using more overtime in these next couple rounds. And we see that we increased our automation more than anyone else, which is very good. In my previous video, I accidentally said don't increase automation, which is false. I'm going to go back and update that. Um, we can see our plant utilization. Uh, you want to be slightly above 100%. This 133%, that's about perfect. Anything under 100% and you're underutilizing, and anything over 150% and you have not enough capacity. So keep scrolling down. Uh, we can see we had about 18, 19% market share. Um, and we did very good in this sector. Um, we are the number one product. Um, these 
first five or six products, these are ones that are mainly traditional. These ones that only sold 91% of the market share. These are low-end products, as you can see up here, that sort of got um, just swept in just a few products. So when you're making your decisions, you only need to care about these first five or six products, ones that are specifically for the traditional market. So in here, we can see our performance is it was pretty on par with everyone else. We actually had the exact same as cake. Um, our list price was pretty good, but right here, our promo was fifteen hundred and our sales was three thousand. So we have the highest customer awareness and the highest customer accessibility, and in turn, that makes us so we have the highest December customer survey score. So that means we're getting our product out there and people are liking our product. So more of the same in this low end. See these ones that only sold a couple units. Those were sort of just swept in. But one thing you need to look at here, um, going back to the first or second page, I actually ran out of inventory in my low end product. And you can see that my actual is about 16, 17%. But my potential is all the way up at 23, 24%. So that means if you look down here, I sold 18% of the market. Did I stock out? Yes, I did. And that's because I didn't create enough units and I would have been able to sell up to 24% of this market share. That was my potential. But since I stocked out, uh, my customers had to turn to my competitors. So next round when I'm making my decisions, uh, I need to be aware of that. Either I need to increase um, how much I produce or um, price my product a little bit higher. So one reason why we sold more than everyone else is we look at the price. That's the number one thing. Our price was the lowest, $19.99. Even me uh, dropping it by one cent helped us. Um, you know, customer awareness, customer accessibility was the highest. Um, so we did very, very well, and we just need to produce more units now. Looking at the high end, this is a very competitive market compared to up here. We had the lead and the low end, but high end, there are three competitors that are right on line, and then four and five. So we see we sold the most. Our list price was very competitive. The performance and size were very good. And I'd say the main reason why we beat everyone out is because of this customer awareness and this customer accessibility score. Um, everyone else did very well compared to us, but we won because we spent the most in marketing and we had the product that they wanted. The ideal position was uh, they wanted 9.8, 10.2. So we were a little bit behind, but we'll be able to catch up. The ideal age, our MTBF is uh, right in the middle. So we did well in this one as well. Ooh, this is another one, performance. So we sold 19, oh, where are we? We sold 18% of the market. Yes, we stocked out. We could have sold above 25%, which is amazing. Once again, we spent the 1,500 and the 3,000 in marketing. So if we would have had up here, we would have been to sell, we would have been able to sell so much. So next, when you're making your decisions, uh, just be aware of that. Size, more of the same, we sold out. So when we make our decisions, produce more and keep spending in marketing. Down here, uh, this is on page, what page is this? Page 10, um, we see that we had 18.7% of the market. This is our actual market share in units as a percentage. And so we can see right here what we did, and this is more detailed than the little graphs it gives us. So we sold 18.7%, but we actually, our potential market share, if we would have produced enough, we could have sold 21.9%. That is awesome. So we are 3% lower than we actually could have been with our inventory. So be aware of that. Um, we stocked out in almost every single one. So we need to produce more units. And we can see where our products are in the perceptual map. Remember, things get smaller and faster as things move along. So things are going to move uh, down and to the right, and everything's going to flow towards this corner down here. And we can see where our competitors are. Um, for certain professors, you do a HR and a what's called TQM, Total Quality Management. That isn't open yet, so no one spent any money in that. And HR uh, did not open. I'm not doing it in this class, but you'll be able to see a summary of it right here. And in your an annual report, um, this is specific to your company, and you can see your cash, you can see just even more financial statistics. 
um, and it will give you a lot of good information. Uh, inventory carry costs. Um, so if you have any questions about any of the financial statistics, scroll down to these last pages. Um, so that's just a brief overview of this capstone courier. Um, one thing that I want to mention again is what page is this? Page four. I decided to create new two new products, a new traditional product and a new high-end product. Before you make decisions, check if anyone else is making a new product. Um, beyond that, you know, as you spend more time with the capstone courier, you will be able to learn it better and you'll be able to know what you should look for and what is personal to you, what is best for you. So when you open this up, spend time in it, see if you can decipher the numbers. But for now, keep working, keep working hard. And especially if you're doing practice rounds, don't be afraid to go back and redo a round or two or even restart the entire simulation. The more time you spend in it now, the better off you will be at the end. So good luck and keep